Hey guys, this is Rob from Epica and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. I can't tell you how many podcasts were like, that was great. And Bruce is like, I didn't hit record. Don't believe the thing he said. That's a bunch of BS. (laughs) This is the most professional podcast you'll ever be on. Yeah. (laughs) By the way, that's a fantastic shirt. Oh, thank you so much. I love it. And that's probably my favorite album right there, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. I love the Hellboy figurines in the background. I don't even this is still oh. like this is this is still this is penis man i've got a huge collection over here <laughs> <laughs> are you in the netherlands just, right like, just like any nerd most of the stuff is still boxed actually but yeah i'm always out of space that's the that's the main problem yeah, yeah. all right we like, can just start and rena will jump in i got a great cd in. collection too my god also, yeah this is also still just a fraction <laughs> <laughs> So you're a collector is what you're saying. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Mostly horror stuff? Well, actually, mostly, yeah, mostly Mike Mignola-based stuff if it comes to the whole comic thing. And yeah, like you know, Hellboy. I'm a huge Hellboy fan. I mean, this says enough, right? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's, uh, there's Rena. Hello uh-huh. there. How are I, guess you, Rob? I guess I guess it's good morning for you. Uh, she's uh, in Finland. In Finland, oh, then then it's, actually she's it's, it's later for us. It's for you at seven, right? <laughs> Spot on. Seven yeah. exactly. I know my time zones. <laughs> Clearly, for me, <laughs> yeah. there's still kind of some sort of sorcery. I know I don't understand how that shit works. Yeah, but, I, know, um, I, know. I, I know. I know how that feels, especially on tour. <laughs> so I'm gonna jump right in. Sure. Bruce, are we recording? Because I, I was am late recording. Then. Yeah, I, I had, <laughs> see this crap. I got to put up with Rob. It's not right. Yeah, it's classic, classic. Yeah, it's classic. Yeah. So I saw the uh, the Hellfest uh, broadcast. Freaking amazing! What was it like being out there? It, it was great to be back again. I mean, last time we played that was in, if I'm correct, 2015. I guess it was with the Quantum Enigma. So. It's been a while, and especially with the whole pandemic crap going on, it's it's such a relief to be able to do stuff like this again. And it's always a big, you know, it's a, we always get a big rush of playing in friends anyway, because I don't know if you ever been to Hellfest before, but the, no. the crowd over there is amazing. Absolutely amazing. I mean, the crowd looked, and we were talking to somebody just previously, Einherger, or however you pronounce it, and they were saying the same thing. It was just absolute insanity with all those people there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Even, even though it was a pretty cloudy day, because I believe the week before it was hot and a lot of people uh, were dehydrated and everything. But because this year they did actually did two weeks, they did like two editions in one. Yeah, it was pretty insane as well. I must say, because when I saw the bill, I was like, "How the hell are you guys going to organize this?" But they did it, and uh, yeah, it was absolutely amazing. Well, I was thoroughly impressed by your set, and I've seen you many times before out on the boat and. You know, I don't oh, right. know, yeah. times and around and it was a great set again so oh thank you beautiful the stage show for you guys keeps kind of getting bigger and bigger that's and, that's the whole idea yeah and more fire yeah. which i find <laughs> really I cool i love the fire yeah um i i didn't know anything about epica until 2011 and i was okay. on 70,000 tons of metal mm-hmm. and i wasn't a metalhead and I was drinking at the bar when I met this guy at the bar and we just started talking and I was like, Oh, what brings you here? He's like, Oh, I'm playing. I was like, Oh, cool. What band are you in? He's like, Epica. I was like, I've never heard of you guys. I'll check you out, I guess. And you were, <laughs> you were playing on the pool deck and it was Aryan. And, and I ended at up at the bar, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or else. <laughs> so I ended up drinking with him and, and Isaac quite a bit one night. Right. And cool. I just couldn't believe, because I'd never heard of them or heard mm. of Epica at all, and I fell in love with the band on at that set. Like it was just so I'd never heard that type of music before. And I come from I came from Canada, you know. I'm very kind of sheltered in my metal world at the time. <laughs> Seventy thousand tons of metal really opened my eyes to what metal was. And I, I bet that must have been pretty traumatizing for you as well. <laughs> 
on such a boat with all those crazy idiots like being stuck together on a boat for four days or something like that. It was a religious experience, man. It was like the best well, time of my life. I was oh, just like, yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I'm never going back, you know? And um, it really turned me into a fan and I've been following ever since. Um, and it's just amazing to watch how you guys are constantly like growing. Everything you do is growing. The productions are growing. The stage productions are growing. Um, like art, art, artistically, you're constantly growing. Mm-hmm. And it's something that, that, that I find inspiring personally. Okay. Now, I just saw you went through and did a huge tour of Mexico. Right. Which, which must have been kind of interesting. How was that? It, yeah, that's uh, pretty correct. Uh, it was very interesting, to be honest. Um, first of all, I must say that we were a little bit afraid that it would have been like, perhaps it would, because we did nine shows there. I thought that like, maybe it's a little bit too much just for Mexico, just because it's the first time we did, that we did like nine shows in one run in Mexico, just one country. And since the whole thing that's been going on with the pandemic and ticket sales going down and everything, I was a little bit afraid that it, that it might be a little bit of a bummer, that tour. But holy shit, it was such a, an amazing tour and a lot of people showed up and wow, just one word, wow, it was an amazing tour. It's one of the coolest tours that we ever done. I can tell Yo, you. Some of the footage I saw from there, it looked like you guys were playing like tens of thousands, like it was just packed everything was jammed yeah absolutely yeah that's yeah even, even if it, i mean was, i must say it also blew our minds we didn't expect it at all because i mean things also here in europe there are a lot of bands that are coming over here and even with like bigger names sometimes they, they play at the venues that they normally play and they're not even sold out or they, they they close the balcony and stuff like that we were kind of expecting the same thing to happen in mexico as well but no not at all not at all so that brings me to my next question then because um, like when I, I remember I came back from 70,000 tons of metal 2011 and I used to teach audio engineering and I had a student from Brazil and I was like, I told her, Oh man, I saw this band Epica. She goes, Oh my God, I love that band. They're like the backstreet boys in Brazil, man. They're huge. And then it, as I, as I started to learn, <laughs> no, I don't mean that that's what she told me. I, I'm yeah, just yeah, repeating yeah. it. And I noticed like in South America, metal and you guys are quite huge. Mm-hmm. And in Mexico, so what is it in the U.S. and Canada that's not that we don't that we're not getting, you know, as a general population? What are we missing? Um, I, I guess you can kind of compare it to Europe as well. We're, we're I guess we're all pretty spoiled. I guess that's the main thing, and also that there's like I hate to use that word, but there perhaps there's a little bit of a saturation of the market as well. Perhaps a little bit of an overkill. If it comes to bands, because uh, to be honest, the first time when I toured the US, I was surprised that certain bands that are huge over here played in yep. like these really crappy little clubs, yeah. like more like sports bars in the US. And that's the same thing, like compared to if you go to South America, Central America, I guess there many years ago, there weren't that many bands actually touring over there. And I, what I remember actually before my time, before I joined the band, Epica was one of the very first metal bands actually to go there. I remember when Mark told me, because I have known Mark for many, many years, when he told me like, oh, we're going to do a tour in Mexico like 15 or 20 years ago or something like that. It was Everybody was looking at him like, what the hell? Why are you going to Mexico? Why are there even venues over there? Because a lot of people are not aware of that. And um, I guess that's one of the reasons why Epica has built up a really big fan base over there because the band has started really early playing there. Because they also told me the story that um, once they played in Costa Rica, and there were two metal concerts, concerts that year. One, Metallica, two, Epica. Wow. So so you can imagine that, I mean, even though there's a big, I mean, there are a lot of metalheads over there, they have only choice for, for two shows, then they'll probably go pick both shows. Compared to if you go to the US or Canada or anywhere here in Europe, there is always a band playing. Even, even if you come over here and let's say you go to Amsterdam, for instance, if you go to Amsterdam and you want to check out the band, it's not a matter of like, oh, are we actually being able to check out the band? It's rather the question like, which venue are you going to check out or which band are you going to check out? Because you have like 10 uh, or maybe 20 options a, a night. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Mm-hmm. It's just something I noticed, you know, and and that the old student of mine really opened my eyes to what was happening with metal, especially right. in Central and South America. I was just like, 
wow, I had no idea that it was, you know, and then, then you see tour footage from bands like Arch Enemy and they go down there and it's the same thing. It's just yeah, 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 insane, yeah. you know, and I'm just like, what are we missing? That's and and you're probably right. It's this oversaturation of the market. But like I remember seeing you guys on seventy thousand tons of metal, then all the mm -hmm. concert footage, and then you came through Vancouver where I used to live, yeah, and you played uh, like a smaller club there, and I was just like, this is it was packed, mm -hmm. you know, it was great, and I think I even ate sushi with you guys that night. Actually, I did. I have photos of it. Could be that's, but that's been a while, right? <laughs> yeah, it, a long time ago. That was twenty twelve. Like. Decade oh, ago. Oh, yeah, I remember those were like these huge sushi rolls, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, with Rory. Was Rory with was Rory, the tour right, manager. right, right. Yeah. I remember that he came in the tour bus with these huge <laughs> yeah. boxes of sushi. I, I briefly actually ate from the whole band and crew and was able to eat from that like for three days or something. <laughs> 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 like sushi Who for breakfast for lunch. Three day for old sushi. That's a good oh, question. Uh, like, isn't that a death wish? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I remember yeah, that was that was pretty crazy. <laughs> but it was just something I thought about like how do we how do we as metalheads uh get the message out in North America better so that mm -hmm. bands have more exposure and play bigger venues, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have the answer. Are... It's just a question I have all the time. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. But there is also a big difference that, for instance, if he, if if the runner picks us up, picks us up from the airport and he put on the radio, you hear rock music. Yeah. If you put on the radio over here, also here in Europe, to be honest, it's all this. I don't want to put certain music in certain boxes or genres or whatever. But let's face it, it's just crap. You're not you're hearing classic music. You're not hearing metal or rock or classic rock, for instance. There are a lot of people over there that are still listening to a lot of 70s and 80s stuff as well, yeah. which is quite rare over here and probably in the States as well. Ah, huh. huh. interesting. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not well, trying to sidetrack the guys, conversation. Like, I bet that's pretty rare. Then we got these guys. They're like, hmm, yeah, it never happens. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're all the fuck, you know? But <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Old. No, sorry. Like I might be bald, but I'm not 50 yet. Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm, I'm here just sneaking around, trusting beauty filters and shit, hiding my age, which is also <laughs> almost 40 in three months. But <clears throat> you're, you're, even uh, hiding where, you're, you're even hiding where you are. Yes. True. True. Very yeah, incognito. I, I see San Francisco and you're probably in Helsinki or where are you, where are you right now? <laughs> In Espo, yeah. So, oh. like, you know, the nearing city to Helsinki, yeah. just a stone's throw away from Tavastia, where you have probably. Ah, right, 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 yeah. right. So, like, what, what, what's, what's up now? What's happening with Epic? Like, are, are you guys working on new stuff or, or just touring, just doing gigs? We're doing a lot at the moment, even though we have like two weeks off, which is still doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes uh yeah like you said we just had a tour in uh in mexico we also did some dates yeah. and we played in israel we played in turkey we did some festivals here in europe as well we're going to uh greece next week we're going uh to hungary we're also playing at walking festival um a whole bunch of other festivals also in france i believe and then of course mid-september uh, or actually i'm skipping one very important thing Early September, we're going to celebrate our 20th anniversary with a 20th anniversary show in Tilburg in the 013. And we also already did some preparations for that this week. We went to the venue, checked some stuff out, what we're going to do production-wise as well. So we're talking about big stuff and flames. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you have it. And uh, so yeah, the, bigger the, the bigger the band. So Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now, we're already starting to get in this... I remember that back in the days, the stages were too big and we looked kind of boring on stage. Now the stages are getting too small. <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's, That's a cool. good problem yeah. to have, though. Yeah, well, it's problem. your first world problems. Uh, I love <laughs> all the metal work you guys have on stage right now. Like it looks oh, like yeah, an yeah, iron yeah. worker built it all up and yeah, it's very cool. That's really cool. Yeah, definitely. What was the, yeah. um, what's the we thought process? Way, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, we also have, uh, because of the 20th anniversary, we're also doing some re-releases as well. Like the first three albums will be re-released in a box set, but also with the Live in Paradiso DVD that fans have been waiting for 20 years now or something. 
Wow. And uh, that's also something uh, where it really, it feels like a, absolutely like a relief that it's finally going to happen. Even though it's before my time, it's, I wasn't even part of the band yet, but I noticed there's a, like this huge myth behind that whole show and people just want to see it. So I'm really glad that we finally can put that out. And, and last but not least, between the uh, North American tour and uh, South American tour, we're also going to release a new project that we've been working on, a new secret project. Oh, man. It's new no, material as well. it's, and you're probably going to hear some things that you never have heard us doing before. So Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. It seems like you guys are always working. Yeah. As a yeah, band. I hear, I hear that a lot. <laughs> which which is cool yeah but it's just like it's like you're like oh we have two weeks off well you're doing promotion you don't have yeah. two weeks off right mm -hmm. <laughs> you're still yeah. working yeah exactly we're two weeks at home still doing stuff yeah yeah but i feel like that hard work is what makes you you know one step ahead of everyone else right because you guys are grinding mm. yeah well that, that's definitely if people ask me like what what is what is the force behind this band? It's definitely the, 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 the passion and that we are very driven. Absolutely. I wouldn't, I can't ignore that. That's, that's definitely a thing. If it feels like it, it's kind of weird because sometimes when I have like a day off or it always feels like, uh, like, Oh damn it. I haven't done anything. I feel like a very unproductive, lazy bastard, even though we're doing so much in the meantime, if I look at my agenda and what things we have done in a week time, for instance, it's sometimes it's pretty insane, but it, perhaps we don't even realize it because it's so fun to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so even like the country. That... Go ahead. Sorry. Do you ever miss like, you know, do you get that like urge to, to, to do absolutely nothing for some reason? I can't talk. I'm sorry. Just to do absolutely <laughs> squat and just do nothing for a week. Does that, cause you know, it, it, even if it's fun, you can burn yourself out. Yeah. I know, I know what you mean, but uh, for a few days. Okay. But for a whole week, no, no, it's uh I mean, I can really enjoy being at home and sitting on the couch, just watching TV or movies and do nothing. But after a few days, I'll get bored anyway. Yeah. There's always okay. something going on over here. So. <laughs> so what's it like playing in such an influential metal band? Because, I, you know, I in my eyes, I kind of see Epica as like the pinnacle of what you guys do. You know, that genre of music. So what's it like playing in a band like that? Like, do you have a lot of um, younger artists that come to you asking for help or advice or anything along those lines? Yeah, that definitely helps. But I, I guess sometimes we don't even realize that ourselves that that we're in that position, to be honest. Yeah, because it's been like you said, it's been 20 years. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, 20 that's, years. That's pretty crazy when you think about it. It's And even me, I mean, I, I'm the guy who joined the band. Like, I'm like still considered the new boy, but... <laughs> That's also, I mean, that's also like over Do 10 what? years ago. Over 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, things have been pretty stable. But what you said, yes, absolutely. There are a lot of musicians out there that ask for advice. And uh, I'm also working as a teacher at a metal school. So I'm actually doing the same thing. I'm also uh, helping a lot of young, growing metal musicians, help them with their careers and coaching them and stuff like that. So that's also very cool to do, by the way. That it, teaching is the best way to learn. Yeah. You know, honestly, like if you think you know something and then you start teaching it, suddenly you realize just how little you knew, you yeah. know, because yeah, you get asked definitely. so many questions about stuff that you would have, oh, I never thought about that that way before. Mm -hmm. Oh, I never approached it this way before. And right. there's all these things that come up and then you have to research and suddenly you find out, holy shit, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. And the good thing is also that bit that, you also keep repeating the basis of everything, the whole essence of making music and everything what's behind it, but also your instrument, for instance. And sometimes that, that can, can be a little bit lame, but at the same time, it keeps you fresh as well and keeps you focused. Because I remember that before I did this old stuff, I was playing these very, yeah, crazy progressive metal bands and stuff like that. And it was all about technique and playing fast and stuff like that. And you, when somebody asked me, like, play a simple blues, for instance, I totally forgot how to do that. So right, you yeah. kind of lose your whole essence of the, the whole music making and everything behind it. And that's that's the good thing about teaching is that you keep repeating it over and over again. Yeah, it's amazing. Do you feel a sense of responsibility then to your, your fans and to your, I guess, your students in a way or no? 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I do feel a responsibility also to keep this whole thing alive and to, you know, I mean, in the end, I mean, there's a new generation coming up. There are new genres coming up. And I mean, with this whole world, how it's going right now, we have to definitely keep this whole thing alive. So I definitely feel a kind of a responsibility regarding that. Right. Especially because there is a metal family, right? I mean, there's there's definitely something that holds everyone together from every country just based on the rift. Yeah, exactly. But also the whole industry is changing and it keeps getting harder and harder for like for younger bands to actually break through and to go do tourings and everything. And I mean, when you're starting as a band, you have to invest a lot. And uh, a lot of people don't have the luxury to do that. And things are also changing. I mean, it was not like it used to be like you get a record deal and here's like a huge advance of, let's say, 200 grand or whatever. So you can uh, live of it for a couple of years. It's like, okay, you can already be happy if your record gets released or actually the whole the whole medium of records is starting to be become a little bit dated as well. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the whole social media thing and the whole streaming platforms and everything that the, the whole like music as a physical product is definitely, it's still something for the purists and for the uh, like diehard fans, but it's definitely a thing that's, yeah, it's, it's gone basically. Yeah. Rita? That is, a, that is a huge shift. Yeah, it is. You know, it's, it's massive. And I don't know how bands make that up honestly that revenue loss yeah that, that that's like that's something i don't understand personally and a lot of people with smarter minds have probably figured it out but yeah. i don't know yeah well that that's also one of the reasons why bands also need to play especially if it comes to metal bands you have to tour if you want to make money you want to be able to live of it because that's also the thing a lot of people think that oh these guys are playing these huge shows they must be rich and everything that that's complete nonsense i mean we just have a, like a no. We, we make a living out of it, and we were still making. Uh, we're, we're still being able. Also during the pandemic, when we had the lockdown, we weren't able to play. We still had enough money to make a living out of that. That's all fine. I'm really being very grateful for that as well. But right. it's already pretty much a pain in the ass to be able to to make a living out of this. So yeah. Well, you know, like I saw, on, yeah. like on the on the on the one sheet that was sent over, it's like one thousand shows in sixty countries. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like. When you when you when you think about that, yeah, that's that's a huge commitment. Yeah, it is. You know, like how many dates a year are you guys on the road? Like oh, pre-pandemic. Oh, yeah. Um, well, time-wise, we're always like during like a regular year. I would say like six out of twelve months we're on the road. Definitely. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's crazy. So you're grinding, and that's and I think that makes a difference. Yeah, 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 definitely. So like 180 to 200 days a year, you're out. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 hard work. It is. Yeah, it and is. It's, it's funny like how you think about it, like that it's either every other day you're doing a gig or then mm-hmm. uh, half the year for touring and half the year for chilling, but it's probably closer to the every other day, you know? And yeah, it just yeah, comes yeah. across completely different like that. Yeah, and like we discussed before, even if we're chilling at home, we're still at work. Yeah. That's, that's the whole thing. But that, that it's really funny when I, for instance, when I explain it to like, let's say to to my family, like what we're doing, I always get this like, this remark saying, oh, it's almost like you're running a company. It's like, no, we're running a company. <laughs> it's exactly yeah. what it is. It is exactly that. Yeah. yeah it's I mean, almost yeah. like you have a business. No, it yeah. is a business. <laughs> exactly. I am running a business. <laughs> Yeah, and it's even a trickier business than many of the businesses out there, you know, like it's, it's, it's windier, it's more like, uh, sort of at the at the mercy of the circumstances, like, right. you know, these pandemics, and of course, like, the entire industry took a hit, and the restaurant industry took a hit, and blah, 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 but like, most industries would still just keep going and, and like right. just make some adjustments and, and it doesn't have to be like a pandemic or anything. It's such an up and down. If people just decide that, Hey, female fronted metal, we're done with that. You know, then, you know, then that's it. And there's yeah. not much you can do about it. Cause it's all about like these trends and fluctuations of what people want and what they're into and what they actually enjoy and what they find bring something into their lives. But mm. there, I have to say that, you know, conquering that whole, South, South America and Mexico and all, all that stuff, because 
I am willing to bet my butt that it's never going to be done in those regions. So you'll always have Mexico, always. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But but also what you said, like, I don't think that people will be done with a certain genre there. I mean, people are listening to certain bands. Mm. And if you're a diehard fan, then you'll care anyway. You don't care. I mean, that's something that I also kind of, at least that from my point of view, what I kind of noticed is that, that the whole thing about genres is kind of, changing there used to be like very strict like oh this is death metal this is black metal this is symphonic blah 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 and now it's all everything is kind of mixed up anyway it doesn't doesn't really matter anymore people are there for the bands and it doesn't matter anymore like which genre you're from right. because also these days we don't do like normally back in the days we did packages with like bands from our own genre that's something that's not really happening anymore there's also okay. something because that's, that's there's, really interesting yeah it's very interesting i'll tell you i wouldn't want to go on before you or after you, I mean, I've, yeah, I've no, seen you guys live, sure. and like Arian is a is a is a clock, you know. He is. Oh <laughs> yeah, he is. He is. Yeah. And and you're no slouch yourself. So like you talk about like you're on the road so much. Yeah. You never mentioned practicing your instrument, but that's also a huge part of what you have to do. Exactly. When we're on the road, that that basically, is, I mean, the funny thing when I, when I joined the band, um, that was actually on the release date of Requiem for the Indifferent. That's when Eve decided to, to leave the band. And I had like 10 days uh, to study all the songs. And um, when I went on tour, I, I, I also asked the guys like, okay, when are we going to rehearse? Because I mean, this is going to be my first tour with you guys. I haven't done a show with you guys before. How are we going to do this? And they say like, you know, just practice. And if there are certain songs that are still kind of tricky for you, we'll do them during the sound check. So, yeah, but what about an actual rehearsal? He said, well, we never rehearse. We only rehearse when we go to the studio. That's it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And, and 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 to be honest, we did the, we did the shows and they went pretty okay, I must say. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Well, yeah. when everyone's a professional and they, they keep their chops up, that's yeah. really all that needs to happen, right? Because everyone exactly. can count. Everyone can play the parts. Yeah. And to be honest, in, I, I in, also... In do, Finland, do, sorry? We have, this, we have this saying that goes... Only the talentless rehearse, and I think it applies perfectly here. <laughs> That's an interesting. <laughs> of course, you have to keep yourself in shape, of course, because I mean, we're not getting any younger, and you have to keep everything like a, it still has to be like an oil machine anyway. But yeah, I mean, even during the lockdown when we didn't have any shows, like what's the use of keep repeating those same songs if you don't have any shows? I mean, yeah, absolutely. Right. Well, that's there are all... people who do it and that's okay i mean that's that's up to other people but yeah not in my sure. case thank you my friend it's been a been a pleasure i'm hoping to catch you when you're here in the states in the i think it's a couple months right a month or two yeah 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 yeah, yeah. We're, we're starting mid-september and uh yeah just let me know i mean send me a message on social media and we'll, we'll catch up where are awesome. they where, where are they playing here bruce i saw the routing but uh i think it's up by you more more in maryland i think there's baltimore a are they playing at the yeah. sound stage probably okay i don't have well, i'll be there hand, for but... sure yeah, no, not, not sound stage. I mean, this is this actually like we're doing a tour with Sabaton, and the veins are starting to get pretty big with those guys. So, oh yeah. man, okay, one second. I, I'm not gonna let you go yet. I gotta look it up here. <laughs> I need to know. I had to. I didn't know you were touring the U.S. Yeah, and it's yeah. coming up. I have. I have to schedule over here. Where, where, where do you guys live? Virginia. Virginia. Let me Washington D.C. Basically. Or Maryland. All those are right here. Right. Uh, Houston, Nashville, Atlanta, Silver Spring. Oh, they're playing Silver, Silver Springs. Springs. The Fillmore? Yeah, at the yeah. Fillmore. Yeah. Oh, that's why. way closer to me. That's yeah, awesome. We're actually, we're, and oh, we're it's sold out. It. Fuck. Yeah. No, it's a double. It's going to be another show. Double show. Okay. Plus you have connections. Exactly. Just let me know. And I'll put you on, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll, come on, man. I'll put you on the guest list. No problem. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, no, I want to go. It's it's uh bring sushi. Bring sushi. I'll bring, <laughs> yeah. I'll bring sushi. As long as you buy, bring the sushi, I'll bring you're on sushi the list. And I'll buy beers. Trust me. Bring it fresh though, not three days old. <laughs> right, 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 right. Still fed right. up from that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Rob, sushi. thank you so much for taking the right. time. I appreciate it. Yeah. Super lovely to meet you. And uh hope to see you guys in the future. Absolutely. Somewhere. Be Got safe it, on man. tour. Definitely. Absolutely. Thank you so Take much. Care. All right. Thanks. Bye. Later. Bye. 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 Bye.